Today on WTF, we're revealing how well the Ninja Creamy performed against a Paco Jet on making soups and mousses. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. And today we are doing part three of our Pakoja vs. Ninja Creamy series. And today we're talking all about soups and mousses. Now, if you are familiar with the Pakoja, we know this is the original gold standard of performance. They invented this Michael Puree technology where you can just finally puree pretty much anything to make ice cream, soups, mousses, stocks, etc., etc., etc. Now, a couple years ago, when the Ninja Creamy came out, this machine is designed to do ice creams, and it does them very well. And you can check that out in the links in the description below where we mm -hmm. did comparisons of, of both. Um, but I know people want to know, can I do more with my Ninja Creamy? Now, this is not suggested by the manufacturer, so we decided we're going to put our Ninja Creamy at risk in order to find out can this machine handle soups and mousses as well as the Paco Jazz? So definitely stick around and remember, subscribe, and we have our weekly giveaway as well. Now, Hannah, I know the first thing we tested was soups. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of soups you tested and what you found out during the testing process? So during the testing process, I tested two different soups. One was a watermelon gazpacho. And I found that both machines were able to puree this really nicely. It came out super fine. And the other soup that I tested was an elote corn soup. This had corn, potatoes, onions, all diced up and cooked off before. Mm -hmm. But I did find that during that process that, yes, the Paco Jet was able to make this into a really fine pureed soup, but the Ninja Creamy wasn't able to handle those larger, denser chunks of yeah. frozen potato. Yeah, Basically. and I just want to make a sh uh, make a note. I believe we also talked before the show. We said, you know, when we we're talking about the watermelon gazpacho, mm -hmm. I think one of the things you had said was yes, it was able to make the puree, but the blade. What did you think? Like the blade wasn't hitting all the surfaces or something like that, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it the blade wasn't reaching all the edges of the. Um, canister basically so when you poured it out and started thawing it you were ending up with all of these little chunks and residue in your soup so it wasn't really giving us the fine puree that we're looking for mm -hmm. that the Paco Jet is able to handle. Yeah so let's why don't we spin um, the soup this yeah. elote soup you want to talk about what's in it and then we can puree it in the Paco Jet um, and then later maybe heat it up and like show people how nice it is and talk a little bit more about kind of what we found with the creamy when we were doing that as well. Yeah, definitely. So this is a pretty basic soup. I just started off by cooking down some onions and garlic and jalapeno, and then I'm adding in some potato and also some frozen corn. And I thought I cooked that all up together, added some spices in it, put it into our canister, and then I filled it up with chicken stock mm -hmm. just to the brim and well not the broom but to the pour line and then put that in the freezer to freeze solid cool. yep um, so if we want to go ahead we can just start our paco jet i have this set to 10 spins so that is the whole entire canister mm -hmm. and i'm just going to go ahead and hit go <laughs> So we just spun our soup in the Paco Jet, and as you can see, it is fully pureed. Obviously, it is still frozen, mm -hmm. but we are going to go ahead and put this in the pan and thaw it out, add some heavy cream, and make it into a lovely soup. Yeah, and you can kind of see that before in here, it's kind of like what you see in this container. You see all these chunks. Yeah. Right? You can't see inside there, but nope. you can see here all these chunks all these solids, mm -hmm. and you just compare it against that. All gone. This whole thing is now completely, consistently yes. smooth. Now, I'm sure some of you are waiting for us to spin this in the Ninja Creamy, and there's a reason why we're not doing that. Hannah, do you want to talk about what happened when we try to spin it in this machine? Yeah, so when we were spinning it in the Ninja, the blade actually broke off into the mixture. So for safety reasons for the machine, we're not going to stress test it anymore. 
but we do conclusively know that you can't spin a soup like this in the Ninja. Yeah, so we were able to fortunately or unfortunately capture some of the video yeah. footage of when we were trying to do that. That's gonna be right here somewhere. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pop it down here so you can see what's happening. And what you see is that the blade is pretty much facing so much resistance from the potato chunks yeah. that it's starting to bend backwards and it falls off, I'm assuming, as a safety precaution mm -hmm. so the machine doesn't explode on you. Um, Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we certainly don't recommend that. And like Hannah said, right, she was able to do the watermelon gazpacho, mm -hmm. and while it wasn't as smooth, it was able to do it. So if you're like, I really want to try this, I would say think about what you're putting in there. If it's very solid, mm -hmm. um, don't do it. If it's like very, very soupy, kind of like, you know, if it already has kind of that custardy ice cream base texture, everything is very, very soft and there's no resistance, mm -hmm. you could probably get away with it, but you know, again, it's at your own risk. You know, please do not say Modernist Pantry told me to do this. We do not. <laughs> but we're just letting you know what happened when we tried it. Mm -hmm. All right. And the second thing we wanted to show you today was a mousse, um, but the mousse takes a little bit more time to spin. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll be right back on camera with the results of the mousses that came out of both machines. All right, and we're back with the finished soup, and we're about to talk about our mousses, but first, of course, I wanted to go over this week's giveaway. This week's giveaway will be a $25 gift certificate to modernistpantry.com, and you can enter to win by leaving in the comments below if there's anything else that you would like to see us test, either in the creamy, the Paco Jet, or whatever, you know, we're always looking for new ideas for future episodes that you're interested in. Okay, Hannah, do you want to talk about the finished soup and a little bit about the process of what you did to finish it before we roll into the mousses? Yeah, definitely. So we have a little elote inspired soup here. So it's a corn puree soup base, of course. And then to top that off, we have some cojita cheese, some pancetta, some tahine, a little bit of cilantro, and to finish the soup off, all we really did was put it in a pan, heat it up, and then add a little bit of heavy cream, and just bring it up to the temperature you want, cool. and you're good to serve. Yeah, so I just quickly want to show you the texture of the soup made in the Paco Jet. Mm -hmm. So this is incredibly creamy. There are no particles in here. You see, you know, this is it the cilantro? Yeah, we have some jalapenos the, in there. Yeah, so that's all you see, but this kind of came from, you know, it's just silky smooth right now. And it tastes incredible. So when you have a soup like this, you're like, this is why the Paco Jet is literally the best. Because you can puree everything. It's very mouthwatering, so it's hard to talk right <laughs> after you have a bite. But this is kind of why the Paco Jet is such a standard in the industry in terms of its power and abilities. Because this soup is outstanding and uh, as you've seen before, we could not get that from the creamy at all. Now let's talk about the mousses. Do you want to talk about what mousse you tried to make and what happened when you made them? Yeah, so I made a Parmesan rosemary mousse. It's just a heavy cream base that has been infused with Parmesan and white wine and rosemary. Um, so it's the same exact mixture that went into the Paco Jet as well as into the Creamy. And they were both spun once. And as you can see, we have two very different textures that mm -hmm. came out. In the front, we have the Paco Jet. This is very smooth mm -hmm. um, and also a lot lighter. It's whipped. And then Ooh. in the back, we have from the Ninja. You can see it's kind of crumbly and dense. Mm -hmm. It's not giving us the mousse texture that we're looking for. Yeah, so I kind of want to dip into this as well. Mm -hmm. This is a new spoon, so don't uh, don't come at me for double dipping. You can kind of see how silky it is. This is still like a little bit frozen because I know we had to prep it, but it has such a good creamy, cheesy texture. It is real, oh, it's so, so nice. It, well, it tastes like ice cream pretty much. Yeah, Parmesan whereas, ice cream. <laughs> yeah, which we have a recipe yeah. for. Um, whereas if you look at, you know, this one, this is basically looks to me like just crumbled up cheese at this point. Yeah. I mean, it still tastes okay, but it's definitely not what I would call a mousse. Mm -hmm. So when we think about at the end of the day, what the capacity is of these two machines, you can tell this right here, super powerful, can do everything. Um, you know, it's expensive, but it, there's a reason why it has that price tag. Mm -hmm. And this machine, you know, it's great for ice cream, it's great for these like soft, I would say soft purees where there's mm -hmm. not a lot of solids, not a lot of density. It does well, but 
you know, if you want to do anything else in it, you are putting your machine at risk, and also it's not always the safest, so I, we would say we don't recommend this. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have anything else you want us to test in the machines, let us know. You can get these recipes in the links in the description below. They are absolutely delicious, and we hope you give them a try. And until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. 